So we've had our first day of CitizenCon 2953. On the ship side of things, it looks pretty promising from like a perspective of old concepts to new concepts. They started off with the Spirit A1 demonstration that we've already seen and they sort of went on from there to show you the internals and whatnot, sort of just give it an official opening and demonstration for us. As you can see, it gives it a good little bit of a cinematic. We did see a lot of stuff relating to ships in terms of HUD, UI, and the star map. It's been a really like content-packed day, and I think a lot of people got a lot out of this. And, you know, I think we got a little bit of what we wanted to really, really see. So, as we know as well, as start of 31st of December, people will be randomly selected from the CitizenCon goodies pack and um, concierge and testers and most active players to actually play in a separate environment of Pyro, which I think I did mention this in one of my videos previously. But getting into the good stuff, we're going to go straight into it. So this is the internals and basically just an overview of the Spirit A1 that you know that we have gotten. Now I particularly like this ship and I like that it's so small and compact and one of my most favorite um, parts of it is that when you put the ramp up and down it has that like red outline around the ramp. I think that's really good, that's really good detail um, as well as the little Crusader screen as you walk in the first rear door to your right you can actually enable the emergency mode and whatnot and as you can see here that's where you put your armor and stashed away you got a bed you got a um, shower a toilet just the basic necessities that you need you've also above some of those i think it's the beds you've got like a storage facility as well so you like you put in your guns your weapons your armor it doesn't hold like massive amounts but it holds enough for what you need to do if you want to do like mission jumping go from location to location which is something of what I had used it for. So if you haven't had one of these or checked it out or flown one, I would definitely go and check it out. And, you know, honestly, you're not going to be disappointed in like any sort of fashion, I would assume. I mean, it is a nice flying ship and it does handle very nicely. That is a, like just a given. Now, moving on from there, we're going straight into the RSI Zeus. Now, if a lot of you don't know law of star citizen or ships this is basically one of the like this is the ship that started most of it and had a quantum drive in it so we know that we got the Zeus sort of armor set um, to you know go with this ship I guess and it was a given that we were going to get this eventually now there are currently three variants of this ship as per se but they did give us a bit of a sneak peek at one called the ST now the ST I'm going to go ahead and guess is somewhat of a sports ship whether or not we see anything about this tomorrow I have no idea we'll just have to wait and see what they give us now I'm not gonna be able to do everything for tomorrow's segment I'm gonna to have to do it later on in the evening to do the work on that but anyway this is the mark 2 of the Zeus this is the leaked ship and I'm pretty sure John crew tried to discredit the leak so I was a little a little I was like oh no well that sucks you know it doesn't obviously he wouldn't agree with them anyway but anyway as you can see this is the three variants of it here you have one for cargo you have one for exploration and you have one for security and bounty hunting which will have an EMP device a quantum dampener help neutralize hostiles and whatnot so that's quite interesting now they did, did show us the internals as well but they didn't really give us any information on the internals which I'm a little disappointed with that they didn't do that um, but again it's just it is what it is I guess we'll have to just wait and see on where they go with this but we'll show you the internals now and we'll sort of go through the variants and have a look into them and see you know which one is for you now these um, ships are quite unique as I did state now there is the essential the marquee then you have the clipper version which is the cargo variant of the ship now on their website they do have the interiors I didn't actually realize earlier but they have the internals and they tell you pretty much what is what you know given which ship that you get now they all have their different little things obviously being that the clipper will have 128 SU and the others won't have as much where um, I'm pretty sure the ES will have 32 ES, uh, SCU and the MR will have 16 SCU so again it's you know they do have their advantages being that they are going to be um, 
modules and there is a fourth module coming as we have seen now this is the external of the es the exploration version this one has a crew count of three suit so three suit lockers 32 scu of cargo four size two shields one size three fuel and one size three radar this is the interior of the es so at the front you've got the cockpit behind there you've got the suit lockers and before the cargo hold you have the crew habitation and then you have the cargo hold so looks like it's pretty spacious this is the MR version this is the bounty hunting ship so this has a crew complement of three it has three size two shields 16 SCU of cargo one size three remote turret an EMP and QD um, and it has an onboard armory now this is the internals of said ship now it has a cockpit up the front suit lockers as last time a crew habitation and behind that it has the armory and the cargo hold wall and it actually has a prisoner transport so that is very interesting so they look like beds for the prisoners to lay in um, whether or not you know some form of con like interdiction is needed and I guess you're gonna have to be able to cuff the people to be able to put them in there or stun them in some fashion of speaking now whether or not this ship is gonna be you know somewhat faster we're not sure we'll have to see once these come out but I'm going to say that these ships are going to have their different um like they're going to shine in their own ways in terms of speeds and obviously something to complement their particular uh, module this is the cl version this is the cargo version of said ship three size two shields again complement of three crew uh, 128 seu of cargo two size two fuel tanks uh, one size two tractor beam on it and a one size two quantum fuel tank now this is the interior obviously cockpit suit lockers crew habitation and a cargo hold which is obviously looking a little bit bigger in this one given that it does have a higher seu of cargo now this is good for smaller exploration i would assume this here is the ST version so I'm gonna guess this is the sport version that they they may announce tomorrow or later on I'm not hundred percent sure it'll be good to see let me know what you all think down in the comments especially use that at the show there this ship is in a white box phase this is like the sort of them demonstrating it to us the externals and whatnot now again they said this could be 12 months away they didn't I don't know if this was demonstrated in the silhouettes of the ship that you know ships that are coming in the next 12 months but again it this could have been in placement of what I thought may have been the galaxy again you know I don't mind RSI ships but the new design queue they're taking on I'm not I don't know I'm not a massive fan of it I was never a massive fan of the galaxy this ship does seem quite nice you know it does seem like it's quite elegant um, the design is looks like it should be fast I won't say that it's going to be like terribly fast, but I would say that it has some form of a decent attitude of speed to it. And this is the cargo hold of it. Obviously, they've stacked a bit of cargo in there to give you a demonstration of what it is to look like when you have cargo in there. Going through the back of the ship or through to the front of the ship from the rear. Whether or not this is the cargo version, I'm going to assume that this is um, that variant of the ship. Now, they could go a lot of ways with this ship. They could do more variants with this, but I don't know if they will, you know, intend on doing that. Now, since they are heavily relied on RSI right now and trying to get that manufacturer sort of out the door uh, with all the ships done because they have particular design cues for this um, manufacturer so they can do like the Orion, the Perseus and whatnot. That looks like a uh, docking collar or whatnot or just to EVA out of. And this is the cockpit where you pilot it and I guess use the remote turrets from let me know is what you you all think of this ship I have two of them I think I have the exploration version and I have the bounty hunting version definitely needed to get me one this here is the Drake cutter as we know we got the one Drake cutter now there are supposed to be three variants they did announce the Drake cutter scout at this show so did you get one of them and they have really just done this because people have responded really well to it now the drake cutter scout obviously is going to be somewhat of like the herald in a fashion i wouldn't say the herald but maybe the terrapin it's going to be something like what the terrapin would be now they didn't really go or indulge on the um, scanning array or the scanning gameplay since they did say that will be something for tomorrow's um, part of the show to show you and demonstrate 
um, different gameplay functions of throughout the game but this is going to be one of those um, functions and game roles that they really want to sort of show you and go into which again I guess is good to see that they want to do that now this is sort of like a transition between the original and the new cutter scout showing you them and they did show you just before the third variant that they're not sort of you know which is redacted right now which is kind of disappointing now they have changed the engines on this to sort of like a dual engine um, they did swat like change out the rear of the ship as well to make it a little bit more open for the um, like the scanning console in there and it looks like you may be able to actually fit a vehicle but it does sort of push up on the habitation part of it and obviously they've had to sort of rework the interior a little now this has one size 2 radar, two size 2 weapons and two size 2 missiles so let us know what you all think about all this like ship content and all this sort of stuff that has been going on and they've announced because I think you know it feels very interesting feels like we're going in the right direction this year in terms of concept ships and the backlog of concept ships I didn't actually realize how many weren't left to do but again the cutter scout looks very good they did this because the response to the actual cutter was really quite nice as you can see the motor engines have changed there um, apparently it was really popular which I thought you know would it be because people actually want this ship, which in myself, I want this ship, or is it that people have bought it because they want cheap LTI tokens and they've sort of mistaken the fact of what people are going to get this ship for? I don't know if they can see those statistics. It'd be interesting to know whether or not they can see those stats. Um, and again, they've opened up the rear of this ship and it looks fantastic. Like they've done a really good job with these, like this cutter. Um, I honestly do love the design cues they've taken with Drake at the moment. So as you can see, that's the scanning suite um, sort of work area. Um, the habitation module has been, like I said, reworked and swapped around so that they could um, push that uh, rear section forward. Um, this is the cockpit, pretty much unchanged. Um, They've had to, like I said, move the components around as well. So that won't always be the same. So the interiors, as you can see, the rear pushes forward into the front, into the habitation, as stated earlier. They did a really good job with these, honestly. Like, I think they did quite a well given presentation of the ship. But I don't think they really presented themselves all that much when they were speaking about it. Yes, I know they probably haven't done this for a while. Some of them haven't actually presented themselves in front of people at all. Now, this is somewhat of the backlog of concept ships. The dark blue are what they are going to be bringing out in the next, what, 12 months or so, maybe a little bit extended. The gray is unreleased and the light blue is released. Now, this is something that John Crew did touch on quite um, in depth and they really did want to sort of explain to people because I know and they know you know it's one of the biggest questions of this year that you know the backlog of ships has just been building up to the point where will they actually get all the ships out and um, you know a lot of these as it states here squadron 42 exclusive ships um, and AI exclusive ships some of these we will probably won't see for a little bit but they did feels like they sort of pushed and hinted on to the fact that we may actually see some of the um, some of the bigger ships later on down the track, and we'll sort of get into that a little bit. Now, this is sort of where they go into the details with the content part of it and how they're sort of working through all the ships, um, and pretty much you know now that they're going to be releasing ships with their gameplay support, and it sort of felt like they were sort of pushing on the SRV, sort of hinting towards that. Whether or not there will be some more ships that have this given gameplay style, we'll just have to see, I guess. Moving forward, they're sort of talking about how Turbulent is now a part of the team and that, you know, they have an extra um, chip team and sort of more vehicle artists, um, one vehicle designer and a QA tester. So it's good to see that they're sort of working more towards giving these ships more life and that, you know, some of these ships will actually get more work done like the Banu Merchman they did touch that you know the Banu Merchman they realized that the ship hasn't been worked on for some time because um, Paul Jones left and some other crew members now they did go into depth to say that these crews of like vehicle developers and whatnot and vehicle artists I guess they brought them up to speed with the Banu Merchman and they're actually working on it now parts of the Banu Merchman are more 
ahead than other parts of it. Obviously, it looks like the exterior is sort of in grey box and parts of the interior are in grey box and most of the parts are in white box. So, you know, they've given us a good bit of information on whether we can expect this ship soon and given us some sort of thought process and to see and think, you know, will we see this in the next 12 months? I don't think we will because it wasn't in their sort of prediction for the next 12 months, but I think it's something that we can see in the near future. Obviously, they really want to get this thing looking like at its best, being that people are going to expect this thing to be absolutely pristine. So as you can see, the exterior looks somewhat nice. I like it. I enjoy it. The interior looks fantastic, even though, you know, it's not fully completed. All the textures aren't there. It's just somewhat of a basic model to give us sort of a demonstration to show that they are working on it and it is not being forgotten. And I think that's where this ship part um, of the show really shined because they wanted to show us that they haven't forgotten about these concept ships and that they are indeed going to be working on this ship and working on previous concepts that people are really pushing on them about. I don't know if a lot of you read Spectrum, but it seemed like they may have actually taken some form of feedback out of that and applied it to a lot of the information that they gave us at the first day of the show, even with the pyro and the server meshing stuff. So tomorrow will be very, very interesting. They did push to say that, you know, Jared did say that tomorrow is going to be even better and some of the stuff you're not even going to expect half of it. So it'll be very interesting. As you can see, this is, I'm pretty sure, the top turret seat um, to go once you go into battle. So they want to have that sense of peace and then you go up into the action. Um, again, the interior of this ship is going to look fantastic. I'm just imagining all the gold and all the sort of architectural designing they're going to do with this ship. Um, honestly, when I did my deep dive on this ship, I wouldn't even, I didn't even think this far forward or how far this ship would really go in terms of design queue um, and work and whether or not they would actually bring it out because it felt like at that time it wasn't some form of a thought that they were actually going to do any work to it. So to see that they're actually taking this seriously and that they're listening to people is fantastic. Um, and again, the Banu Merchantman, this is the trading area, I believe, where people can set shops up. So they'll be interesting to see how they deal with that when it comes out. And this area here looks absolutely stunning. I'm pretty sure this is like one of the first areas that they worked on when they started working on the Banu Merchantman again. And when we last seen it, it was sort of in the same state as the other parts of the ship. It was sort of like in a white box. So it obviously looks like that's where they're trying to put most of their design into right now and sort of work, maybe work out from that area to give the ship like a similar feeling and give it like a really nice flow but again that's the banner merchantman let me know what you all think down in the comments now the going on to the squadron 42 vehicle issue yes a lot of you have been asking this and to see that apparently squadron 42 is in a polish polishing slash balancing state right now so maybe we will see it soon they touched on the idris and other ships that are involved in squadron 42 and when we can see them and expect them at like the cost of the launch of the game. So the Idris will be delivered to owners alongside the Squadron 42 release. How amazing is that? It's just like, and that doesn't even just mean like the M, that means the P, the K kit, as well as that. The Javelin will come after Squadron 42. Again, this is going to be, this is big information. This is something I think they've really put some thought into because people have been pushing on them. Obviously, they're like planning out their work on the Javelin. Um, obviously, it's going to be modular. So they're working on, on all that and what work actually needs to be done to that. So it sounds like it's going really, really well. So Vandal ship owners, you will get the new model of said Vandal ships like the Scythe, the Blade, the Glaive and whatnot. Awesome news. Here, they're talking about the silhouettes. This, so the silhouette ships that we, you know, we vote on which ones we want. But most of the time, they end up designing most of them anyway and making them, which works out well for us, I guess, in a matter of speaking. So, but they really wanted to change it up this year and sort of give us an insight of what they want to do in terms of uh, differences and sort of just give us a little bit of a hint on what we can expect over the next 12 months. So last year's winning choice next month um, at IAE 2953, 
they said they're going to do something different. So this is interesting. I'm very interested in this and I want to know what you think of this because I did take some guesses at what ships we may expect in this. And honestly, I don't even know if I'm right on half of these. You know, I just sort of took what information I had and went with my gut. Now, don't forget, these are just guesses. So hopefully I'm right. Now, this one... You know, I don't know. It didn't it look weird. I think this may be the Ranger series. I'm not going to say it 100% that it is. This here could be the Origin X1, which obviously it looks like the Origin X1. So I'm going to say it's the Origin X1. The Ursa Rover variant. So this may be a medical variant. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. This MPUV cargo or whatever it is. Didn't we already have this? Or is this just another variant of that? This looks like it could be the RSI Galaxy, you know, it looks like the RSI Galaxy, but it could be the Zeus. This Air Fury variant on another RSI ship that I don't know and I can't remember, the R uh, the Anvil Legionnaire, sorry, I'm getting confused with RSI, goddamn. Okay, so this I'm going to say is the RSI Perseus, it looks like the design of that ship. Going on from there, you got the Retaliator base, so this one that takes all the multiple modules on it. Going on from there... The RSI Polaris. Yes, it's not hard to figure this one out. I think they pretty much wanted to throw it straight in our face and be like, yeah, no, we're not we're not screwing around with this one. So, like they I did mention earlier, they want to sort of stick with the capital ships in brand families to utilize the shared assets to expedite their delivery. So um, e.g. like the Perseus, um, the Orion, the Galaxy, given you know they have the same design cues but different materials and whatnot. So it'll be good to see what they do with this. Honestly, I'm quite amped to know that, you know, they're going to be working on RSI and they're trying to get all of these ships out the door. And I will be very interested to see what um, manufacturer that they will be working on after this said manufacturer. So it looks like they're giving us a look at the Polaris, you know, in action. Now it's not fully completed as mentioned, it may be in grey box. So it does look very nice on the outside. They have changed it around as they did state when they first announced they were reworking it and actually doing some work to it. Now going straight through from the front here, through the cockpit, straight through to the back. Now I'm going to say this is where the emergency pods are. Again, moving through this corridor looks like that might, might be the emergency pods. I don't know. Moving through the corridor, moving through to the back, more break-offs into different rooms and whatnot. I can't remember the exact layout of this, but again, it looks like it may be in grey box. It looks like some rooms may actually be completed. It looks like it just needs to be textured. And again, we could expect this ship soon. I'm not going to say that we are, but we definitely may expect this. It looks like the engine room, the sort of engineering area for this vessel. Going through right out the bum of it into what looks like the hangar area. I'm going to go ahead and assume the torp bay here. Damn, they're big. And then moving out through the back here. And this may actually be the engineering bay. I don't know. It's so confusing to go through the ship like that quick. So here... They're going to be showing this size 10 tops and given that you know i don't think physical armor is still a thing this may not be reality later on once they bring physicalized armor and whatnot and actually bring the ship into its sort of its own as you if you if you know what i mean but as you can see here it launches its big dirty size 10 capital destroying corpses torps with the what is that the i can't remember what it's called anymore but they, they're launching all this at the Idris and man it's so cool the Scorpius that ship is the Scorpius and it's just destroyed these look at the size of the destruction it did just from that one torp that is absolutely insane to watch let us know what you think of this down in the comments I hope you enjoyed this hope it was informative and we'll be doing some more citizen con content related to ships and other stuff in the very very near future and I hope you enjoyed if you liked it, leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Let us know down in the comments and join our Discord now. But I hope you enjoyed. Peace out.